In this video, I'm gonna be testing out the all new Temp Spike Plus, and I'm gonna be putting it head to head with the Meter Plus. All right, if you guys follow my channel, you know I've done a bunch of review videos on wireless meat thermometers. So today I'm going to be testing out the all new Thermo Pro Temp Spike Plus. They sent me out this thermometer to test out and it is very cool, I have to say. Now, I have done a full review on their Temp Spike original wireless meat thermometer. I compared that to the Meter Plus as well. If you wanna see that video, I will leave a link in the description as well as at the end of the video. Now there are a few differences in this new Temp Spike Plus. The first one we can see is that this booster base is thicker than the Temp Spike. You can see there it is a little bit thicker. Now this has a 500 foot range. They are saying that this has a 600 foot range. That is probably why it is a little thicker. Now let me talk a little bit about the ranges of wireless meat thermometers, not ThermoPro specifically, but all meat thermometers on the market today. I mentioned this in a video that I did where I compared the Temp Spike, the Meat Stick, and the Meter Plus. The ranges that they state on these wireless meat thermometers are not really accurate. I'm sure they are accurate if you have nothing in the way from you and the base of these thermometers. If you have a wireless meat thermometer or you've used them before, I'm sure you know that you don't really get the range that they say. That's because as soon as you have to start going through the walls of your house or whatever it is, if there's anything in the way, that range is gonna drop considerably. Now, wireless meat thermometers are great because they have no wires obviously. It just makes it super easy and having the app on your phone is very nice. But again, if you've used a wireless meat thermometer, I'm sure you've had the aggravation of the connectivity issues. Now, like I said, I've tried out a bunch of wireless meat thermometers and these connectivity issues are across the board with every manufacturer. It's just the way that these wireless meat thermometers are made. But that being said, they are a very nice piece of technology and today I'm going to be comparing this Temp Spike Plus to the Meter Plus. This is one of the original wireless meat thermometers you've probably seen on the market, and I think the most popular one out there right now. So I'm gonna go over a few different features between these two, but first I wanna compare this quickly to the original Temp Spike. So like I said, the bases are different and the probes are different as well. So you can see this one is a lot shorter and thinner than this one. It's a little close up for you. You can see the probe is thinner as well as much shorter. And if you look at the ambient temp end, these are much different. After using this while, I know it is a little harder to clean inside these grooves. So it's nice having this nice smooth ambient temp sensor on this one. Now, if we compare it to the Meter Plus here, you can see the bases are totally different. The shapes are totally different. Now, this again has a thicker probe on it. That ambient temp side though is pretty nice and smooth, making it easy to clean. So price-wise, this is usually around $100, but I found that you can get them on Amazon for a deal of about 90 bucks. This as well is going for $90 on Amazon. So the price point is exactly the same, but without testing them at all, I really enjoy the smaller, sleeker probe of the Temp Spike Plus. Just gives you better options for different styles of meat you're gonna be cooking. Also, the Meter Plus has a range of 500 feet, but again, I've already talked about the range issues with these. So we're gonna be doing a comparison test with these, and I wanna use a delicious cut of meat to test it, and I got the perfect thing. And that is going to be some delicious cowboy cut ribeye steaks. These are some of the most delicious steaks you can get. There's just something different about a ribeye when it's bone in and it's this thick. It just comes out amazing, I'm telling you. We're gonna do a nice low and slow cook on it, slowly bring it up to temp. Then when we get the temp we want, we're gonna pull it off and give it a sear over those coals in the firebox, I'm telling you. This is one of my favorite method for steaks, especially a thick cut steak. It does so well with a slow cook, but 
you have to have the sear on it with all this fat. It's just the way a ribeye needs to be. So let's go ahead, get these seasoned up, then we will get our probes into each one of these. All right, so with steaks, I usually go simple. Salt, pepper, garlic, that's all you need. Get some nice smoke flavor on them. Absolutely delicious. But today, I wanna try something a little different. So I'm gonna be using my barbecue seasoning. If you wanna know how to make this barbecue seasoning, I have a seasoning recipe video where I show you how to make my barbecue seasoning, plus three other delicious seasonings, a salt, pepper, garlic seasoning, jerk seasoning, and a blackening seasoning. Four of my favorite seasonings to use. I'll make sure to leave a link to that in the description as well, and at the end of this video. But I'm just going to get a good amount of this barbecue seasoning on here. These are thick pieces of meat, so you can season pretty heavily. Then I like to just pat it in, flip them over. Now the reason I want to use the barbecue seasoning on here today, because most times with a steak, I will be cooking them hot and fast over some direct heat. If that was the case, I wouldn't want to use this seasoning because I have a little bit of sugar in here and that sugar will burn up over the direct heat. But since we're going to be doing a nice slow cook, it's going to give that sugar time to kind of cook out a little bit before we throw it over the direct heat. So now I just want to go ahead and get these sides. You want to make sure to get the edges on a thick cut of meat like this. It is very important. And these are looking absolutely delicious. Can't wait to see how this comes out with this barbecue seasoning on here. This steak does seem a little bit thicker, but this one is a little bit bigger. So we're gonna see how they cook. Hopefully it'll be around the same time frame. I'm sure it will be. But let's go ahead and get these temperature probes set up. All right, so we're gonna set up the meter first. And if you see this button here on the meter, just go ahead and tap that, see it's green. That way you know that it is fully charged, ready to go. So I'm gonna open up the meter app. You pull the probe out of the base. This is going to connect it to the app. It's gonna turn on your probe and it should automatically connect if you've already connected your meter to your app. So as you can see here, pops up. We have a 65 degree internal temperature. It sounds about right. And no cook setup. So we'll click into here. It's a nice, easy use app, very simple. Set up cook, we want beef, and we're going to go with a rib eye steak. They recommend an internal of 140 degrees. Since we're gonna be doing a nice sear on this, I'm going to lower this down to 130 degrees. It also gives you a nice chart here for what is rare, medium rare, etc. Then at the top right, you'll see start cook. Click that. So let's go ahead and get this inserted into the meat. I will put this into this one here. So what I like to do is Kind of make sure it's in the center of the meat here. And before I put it in, you can see there is a line right there on the probe. You want to make sure to get your meat past that line. A lot of times I like to get it right up to the end of the ambient probe and center it right into the middle of the steak and then try and keep it level to make sure you have the most accurate reading you can. So that looks pretty good. Now, if we look at the meter app, we can see our internal has dropped to 45 degrees. That sounds about right for these steaks. I let them sit out for a little bit. Some people say bring them up to room temperature. I don't think that's really necessary. Let's go ahead and connect to our temp spike. Now, same thing with the temp spike plus. All you wanna do is pull that probe out and you will see a little light here that's gonna tell you that it's powered up. Now, back to the phone and we're gonna open up the Temp Spike app. Now you can see all my Temp Spikes on here. I have the original, the Temp Spike Dual, and the new Temp Spike Plus, where you can see it is reading ambient and internal. So let's go ahead and click that. It's giving us 75 degrees internal temperature, that sounds about right, and an ambient of 70. Now here at the top, you can see no profile. If you click that, now we can select beef, and it's saying medium rare, 135. So let's hit okay and it's gonna give you the notification of where you need to insert the probes. And you can see here the notch on the original temp spike, which is similar to that meter plus. And you can see the notch on the temp spike plus is at the base of the ambient temperature probe. So you wanna make sure you get that thermometer all the way into the base of that temp probe. Here it tells you keep the booster one foot away from the grill. So we have beef, medium, rare, but I kind of want to change that. So if we go back and click medium rare over here, if you actually tap that arrow next to 135 degrees, so we can change it to rare, which is 125 degrees. But like I said, I'm looking for about 130. So what we can do here is at the bottom, if you hit this plus, we'll name this as 
cowboy ribeye. And then a temperature I want is 130 degrees. Then hit cowboy ribeye. Okay, it's gonna give us the notifications. All right, now that the app is all set up, let's go ahead and insert this probe into the steak. So like I said, this small probe is gonna make it super easy to put into here. With this one, you really gotta make sure it's centered. This one, you can kind of just make sure it's centered up and down here. And then go ahead and just jam it in there and make sure you get it like that, where the ambient temp probe is right up against the meat. And that is perfect. And as you can see here, you let this barbecue seasoning sit on here a little bit. It's going to give it a fantastic color. So I've got the smoker all warmed up. Let's go ahead and get these steaks right on there. All right, so I got this smoker running around 250 to 300 degrees. I'm gonna throw these right on the top rack here. Now what you wanna make sure you do, first I like to just scrunch these steaks up, try to even them out. But more importantly, this temp probe you want facing outward toward the direction of where that booster base is gonna be. And same thing with the meter, scrunch that stake up. But you want the probe here and here facing outwards. So we're gonna go ahead, put that in there, close this up so they can start smoking. So here at the front of the grill, I'm going to put the meter booster base and the temp spike booster base right there. So they are pretty close to those temp probes. That's gonna keep them connected. So these are gonna be connected to the app and we are going to do a range test to see if they are the same. So I will see you to test that out. All right, so the steak is on the smoker. Like I said, I'm running around 250, 300 degrees. That's fine. I have a large offset smoker, so a hotter temperature is not too big a deal. If you're doing this on a pellet smoker, Highly suggest running around 225 degrees, maybe 250, depending on how long you want it to cook. If you're tight for time, go for 250. If you've got plenty of time, do the 225. It'll come out fantastic. Now let's go ahead, check on these apps to see where we're at. So we'll start with the Meter Plus. You can see we're at internal of 52 degrees and ambient of 231 degrees. 232, 231, it's bouncing back and forth. But let's go ahead and check the temp spike. We're at 48 internal and 237 ambient. So the ambient on the temp spike seems to be a little bit hotter, but that brings up a point on these ambient temp probes on the wireless meat thermometers. What I found with all wireless meat thermometers is the ambient temperature is not too accurate. It is usually a little bit lower than what the actual ambient temp is. Now, the reason I believe that is the case is because that ambient temperature probe is attached to the actual thermometer that is inside the meat. As you can see, it was about 45 degrees on there. So that cold temperature, I think, is going to draw a lot of the ambient temp from that sensor, making it read a little bit lower. Compared to taking an actual probe and just putting it on your smoker, I think that is why this ambient temp is giving you a little bit of a lower reading. So for me, that's not a problem as long as I know that. So I know that these ambient temp probes while the meat is cold, is going to be around 25 degrees colder than it actually is. Now, once the meat starts getting up in temp and the temperature probe starts heating up, your ambient temp is going to be a lot more accurate. So that is just something you wanna keep in mind when you're using these wireless temperature thermometers. But again, it is across the board. So a few things I wanna tell you about the Temp Spike Plus besides being a 600 foot range, and we are still going to test the range of both these in a little bit, but it is 100% waterproof, so you can go ahead, throw it right in your dishwasher and clean it, not a problem. So the Temp Spike has a rechargeable battery in the base itself, and the meter is using a AAA battery to power it. So there is pluses and negatives for each side. The rechargeable battery is nice because you don't have to buy batteries. You can go ahead and just plug it in with the charger that they supply with you. I believe it's a USB-C. Now it's kind of nice to have a battery that you can change out because if you do forget to charge the base, you have to plug it in and let it charge and you're gonna have to wait around for that to get power. Whereas if it has a battery, you can just pull that battery out, throw a new one in and you're good to go. So another thing about rechargeable batteries was from a comment that I got recently on my my temp spike versus meter plus video. And he made a great point saying that 
Rechargeable batteries do not last forever, so at some point they are going to need to be replaced. That's why if you have a power tool with a rechargeable battery, you can take it off and buy a new one. So that could be a problem in the future for the rechargeable batteries. Now, with all my temp spike products, I have not had any issues with them yet. So I'm gonna let these stakes go till they get to that internal temperature. Then we'll come out here with an instant read thermometer and check the accuracy of both these probes. But in the meantime, let's go ahead and check the distance range for both these wireless thermometers. All right, so here is the range test. If you can see my smoker right there. I'd say this is about 50 yards away. You can see here we have lost connection with the meter base. Now, if we check the temp spike, you can see we are still connected. Oh, and we just disconnected on the temp spike. It's going in and out. So you can see we are right at the limit of the temp spike. But we are completely lost on the connection. But again, it is pretty close to where we lost connection. So these are both similar ranges. And you can see this is nowhere near five or 600 feet. This is about 50 yards. You can see the smoker right there. And again, there's nothing here. So that is the test. Very similar between the two. But let's go ahead and check on these stakes. All right, so it's been a couple hours on these stakes. They look fantastic. Check those out. So the one on the right is the meter, and you can see we're at 142 on the meter. We are 135 on the temp spike. See the one with the meter is a little bit thinner, so this might be pretty accurate, but let me go ahead and check it with my instant read. We'll check the temp spike first, and we are perfect, 135. Let's check the meter one. We are 140, so pretty close. So I'd say these both are pretty accurate. Now I'm gonna get these pulled off Wrap them up in some foil while we get that firebox ready to give these a beautiful sear. All right, so let's get this ready to sear some steaks. I just like to break up these coals as best I can, kind of flatten them down pretty good like that. Now I take a couple of these bricks, just drop them down, and I have a little grill grate here. So what I think I'm gonna do Bring these coals back a little bit here. Spread them out. That looks pretty good. Let's get that grate back on. Now we go ahead and get our steaks. Now I've took the probes out. You don't want those over direct heat, but check that out. That is a delicious looking steak. So let's go ahead and throw that right on to get it seared. And here is the second steak. Absolutely beautiful. Let's sear that up too. Ooh. Does that not look good or what? So it shouldn't take too long to get these seared. That fire is pretty hot and I love using this method to sear off some steaks. These should only need a couple minutes per side. It's looking pretty good. Oh yeah, just give it a spin. Oh, this one's looking good. Check that out. Ooh yeah, I'll let it go just a little bit longer. This one's probably good to flip though. Give that a flip. Ooh. These are gonna be some awesome steaks. All right, check this one out. Oh yeah, give that a flip. All right, these should be done. Oh, such a beautiful steak. Check that one out, yep. All right, so I'm gonna get these off, let them rest, and I will see you back to slice them up and give them a try. All right, so the steak is finished. It smells phenomenal. It's got a beautiful crust on it. So before I give you my thoughts, on the two meat thermometers. Let's slice these up, see how the steak came out, and more importantly, I wanna give it a try. So the first thing I like to do is cut the bones off here and save this. This is some of the best meat on this bone here. Now let's go ahead and slice this one right in half. This was the meter plus, which got a little warmer than the temp spike, and check that out. Looks pretty good. I'd say that's a solid medium right there. Not a bad steak. Now let's cut this one up. I'm thinking this one is going to be a little bit better. Oh yeah. Check that out. Now that is a 
perfectly cooked steak in my book. Go ahead, give that a look, huh? Beautiful steak, cooked to perfection. Check out the beautiful crust we got on there. I need to slice this and give this piece a try. I'll give the other one a try too, but this looks absolutely delicious. I mean, come on, nice thick cut of steak right there. Mm -mm -mm. With all the fat, that's gonna be my bite right there. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. That is such a delicious cut of steak. Super tender, delicious smoke flavor. Mm. That barbecue rub on there is absolutely delicious. 10 out of 10 for a steak. And these were choice grade steaks, nothing special. I could eat this all day. Mm. So let me try some of this more well done steak. Mm. Absolutely delicious as well. I like the other steak better, but this is right up there. Mm. This one seems to taste a little bit smokier. So good. All right, so as much as I want to keep eating the steak, Let's talk about these meat thermometers, the Meter Plus and the Temp Spike Plus. Now, these are pretty neck and neck in most of everything that they offer. Price range, identical. Distance range, identical. Now, I do like that Temp Spike Plus because of the size of it. I will choose that one just because of that. Now, the other difference is rechargeable versus batteries. That's a decision you're gonna have to make on your own. But I really enjoy having a smaller temperature probe. So I'm gonna go with the Temp Spike Plus and I bet that there's gonna be sales where you will be able to get this for less than $90. I know Thermopro constantly has sales, so you gotta be on the lookout for them. If you follow me and subscribe on my community page, I will always let you know when Thermopro is having a deal. Now I'm gonna put a link to both of these down in the description below if you're interested in either one. I'll also put a link to everything else I like to use in my videos down there, so be sure to check it out. Now if you wanna watch the original Temp Spike versus meter, I will put that right over here. And they also have a twin Temp Spike, two probes for one. I'll put that review video right over here. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe right over here. But most importantly, get out there, smoke something good.